Are you serious? Get some coffee. Get some strong coffee. Because something's going on at CERN. Last night, we got information that CERN was running red hot. BP Earthwatch explained to us that both beams had been cranked to the highest levels. They were running at TEV 13. Unbelievable. You have unbelievable energy that weakens the magnetosphere around the earth and makes us more susceptible <clears throat> to gamma rays and radiation that would be coming from the sun. Now, the good news is uh, they cranked it up just as that uh, huge hole on the sun's atmosphere had turned away. It's not earth facing. The, there's no sunspots earth facing right now. So that limits the possibility of a solar flare that could actually be coming our way when our magnetosphere is at its weakest point. And when's it at its weakest point? When CERN is running at its hottest levels. And that's happening right now. But we also got some breaking news coming out of CERN. They are starting to find out evidence that the Higgs particles, what's known as the God particle, does decay into quarks. And this is what the scientists there at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland, what they're saying is this is giving them an even better ideal of the origin of the universe. Well, keep digging, guys, because if you keep going, you might actually find Genesis chapter one pretty soon. It wouldn't take long to understand the origins of the universe if you read the Bible. But let me, let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt here and just say, let's read what they're reporting. They may stumble upon Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Here's what <clears throat> that's come out of here as a part of the Atlas, sorry about the uh, phlegm in my throat here. <clears throat> as part of the Atlas collaboration, the Fieldberg Research Group, led by Professor Dr. Carl Jacobs and Dr. Christian Weiser, has contributed to finding strong evidence that, among other things, the Higgs particle does de decay into quarks. The researchers analyzed the uh, data sets that were recorded back in 2015 and 2016 with the Atlas detector at the world's largest particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider, at the European Organization for Nuclear Research, or in other words, known as CERN. What have we learned at CERN? Should we be concerned? Well... It's in Geneva, Switzerland, of course. The strong yet another essential piece to the puzzle about the particle, says Dr. Weiser, who leads the research activity in Fieldberg. The goal now is to prove the decay exists beyond the shadow of a doubt. And based on this knowledge, to measure the Higgs particles properties more accurately. As a result, measuring the decay is extremely important for the researchers in order to explain the short lifespan of the Higgs particle. Okay, so these are the particles known as the God's particles. And how do they continue to multiply and, and make up the DNA of the universe? Now, the measurable deviations from standard theories predictions could point to a so-called new physics, which reaches beyond the standard model. The discovery of the Higgs particle through the ATLAS and the CMS experiments there at the LHC accelerator in CERN back in 2012 presented a milestone in physics, even as the particle's existence had been predicted nearly 50 years prior to that. So 50 years ago, they believed there were God particles, the DNA of God, the, 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 the fingerprint of the creator, the maker of all things. And so when there, there's a time coming when you're going to look into the face of your maker, and I'm going to get to that in just a second. I have one verse for you. So 
as they continue to dig closer into the DNA, into the into the uh, the Higgs particles, the God's particles, it is most short-lived particle that decays into another particle nearby the moment it is produced. The rate which decays into various particles occur can be computed within the framework of the underlying theory. Up to now, researchers have been able to fully prove the decay into other particles, so-called the W and the Z bosons, the protons, the tau leptons, but they had not been able to observe the Higgs particles in its decaying of a B quarks that is expected to occur um, with the largest rate of around 60% probability. The reason is that a number of other processes exist that are hard to um, di- differentiate from the Higgs particles decay into B quarks and that occur at a much higher rate. But now they've discovered the uh, new evidence with uh, the probability that the observed signal is feigned solely by other processes is only 0.018%. And the presentation of these findings was one of the highlights of the conference that they just recently had there in Venice, Italy. So now what they're saying is 50 years ago, they believed there was a God particle. It's taken them this long to create machines that could actually uh, duplicate the explosive, productive uh, abilities of God. Now, they're not saying of God, but who else is crashing protons together? They don't just crash on their own. Somebody had to be creating all things, all right? There has to be a a creator. You can say, well, I believe in the Big Bang Theory, Pastor Begley, fine. But who pulled the trigger? Who set everything into motion? Who created? Where's the blueprints? Where is the fingerprints? Where is the DNA of Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end? The scientific proof that there is a creator. And what they're doing at CERN, oh, they're doing a lot of things at CERN, a lot of which I believe they're trying to open the veil into the next dimension. Some say they're trying to open the gates of hell. There's satanic uh, ritual uh, ceremonies that go on around there all the time. But as they pry deeper into the, um, the particles of the origins of our universe, they find a re- renowned, uh, uh, a, they find a repetitive theme There's something whose fingerprint, they find the fingerprints of a master designer who put everything. So in everything you see being created, the fingerprints, who was there? Who did this? Who started that? Who made that? The the DNA of the creator of all keeps showing up, folks. I'm telling you, you can't get away from it. God himself. Now, if you go to Isaiah chapter 17, uh, I'd like to read for you verse 7. And the reason is, this, the reason this scripture came to us, one of our online church members, one of our viewers of our YouTube videos was watching the other night when we were having those earthquakes in Russia. And of course, it was a 7.7 earthquake on 7.17.17 in Russia that was 11.7 kilometers deep. And I kept thinking, there's something prophetic about this. And uh, one of our viewers sent us an email, and they said, take a look at Isaiah 17, 7. And here's what it says. At that day shall a man look to his maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. And he shall not look to the altars, okay, the work of his hands, neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves or the images. In other words, there's a day coming when man will finally look to his maker and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel, which would be the Messiah, that would be Yeshua, that would be Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So guys at CERN, you keep looking You keep finding 
the fingerprints of God and you're going to find his son. The only way to salvation, it's not going to be an underground city to escape the coming apocalypse. It's not going to be Elon Musk's space ark taking uh, you to Mars to build a colony. No, 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 no. Redemption, salvation comes in one name and one name only. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua, the Savior of the world.